St. Patty's Day is coming up on on this week. Uh, we're in March break. Uh, you know, we haven't seen those kinds of measures taken yet in Canada. Should we? Well, at some point in the near future, we might see those measures come into play if they are required. For now, what public health authorities are doing is asking people to take voluntary measures to reduce the number of social interactions they have, particularly in large, uh, large gatherings. And the hope is that by reducing uh, these social interactions, or more, more correctly phrased, these physical interactions, we can actually reduce the number of opportunities that a virus could jump from one person to another and could actually uh, reduce the, the number of cases overall such that more uh, drastic measures won't be needed. So at this time, there is no recommendation to sort of close down everything, but there are recommendations, for example, for employers to enable people to work from home if possible, and for people to avoid large gatherings, maybe think of smaller gatherings. The key is that whatever we do, we are likely going to be in this situation for quite some time, so it has to be sustainable. And shutting ourselves in in our homes and not having any social interaction, that's just not sustainable. Uh, Dr. Joel Kettner is on the line uh, from Manitoba. Hi, uh, Dr. Kettner, welcome to Checkup. Thank you. Uh, you're, uh, you teach at the University of Manitoba. You're a, a former uh, chief medical officer, I understand. Yes. Uh, so uh, what do you think about how uh, we're, we're coping right now? Well, I don't know what to think, frankly, but um, I'll tell you what I do think. Uh, first, I want to say that in 30 years of, of public health medicine, I have never seen anything like this, uh, anything anywhere near like this. And I'm not talking about the pandemic, because I've seen 30 of them, uh, one every year. It's called influenza and other respiratory illness viruses that we don't always know what they are. Uh, but I've never seen this uh, reaction. And I'm trying to understand why. And I have to say, I really feel for my colleagues that are in public health practice, it's easy for me to sit in the armchair of my office and look at this and observe it and be critical or have ideas. But I really feel for them for, for three reasons. <clears throat> One is that the data they're getting is incomplete to really make sense of the size of the threat. Uh, we're getting very crude numbers of cases and deaths, very little information about testing rates, contagious uh, uh, analysis, uh, severity rates, uh, who's who's being hospitalized, who is in intensive care, who is dying, what are the definitions to decide if someone died of the coronavirus or just died with the coronavirus. There's so much important data that is that is very hard to get to, to guide the decision about how serious the threat is this. The other part is that we actually do not have that much uh, good evidence for these social distancing methods. It was just a, a couple of reviews in the CDC Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal, which uh, showed that although some of them might work, we don't really know to what degree, and the evidence is pretty weak. So the third problem is the pressure that is being put on our public health doctors and our public health leaders, and that pressure is coming from various places. The first place it came from was the Director General of the World Health Organization, when he said this is a grave threat and public health enemy number one. I've never heard uh, Director General of the WHA use terms like that. Then at the announce of the pandemic, he said he's doing it because of a grave, alarming, quick spread of the disease and an alarming amount of inaction around the world. That puts a huge pressure on public health uh, doctors and leaders and advisors and a huge pressure on governments and then you get this, what seems like a cascade of decision-making that really puts pressure on countries and governments, provincial, states, uh, to sort of keep up with this, um, with this uh, action that, that was, you know, that uh, Dr. Hoffman said uh, that we're trying to avoid or should avoid, which is an overreaction. I don't know what's an, uh, what's an appropriate reaction, but I do know that I'm having trouble figuring this 
out. And, 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 and so I, I'm, I'm sure that there are, your medical colleagues across the country are probably nodding their heads when they say that they don't have enough data, that they lack data. They, they, I, I expect <laughs> that health professionals around the world wish they had more data, and, and whether it's the testing rates or the severity rates, all that kind of thing. So, so probably a valid concern. But, but if I could ask one, you, you mentioned that you're not confident in terms of some of the literature with regard to, to social distancing and its effectiveness. Uh, if I could throw that to Dr. Sinha and see what he has to say. Well, I think this is the challenge, right, is that uh, right now we're, we're doing research around COVID, for example, on the fly. We're, we're trying to get what data we can, um, and we're trying to understand these things. But one of the challenges that I think that, that our colleagues mentioned was that, uh, that uh, right now, you know, every year we see things like the influenza, um, uh, you know, the flu season come through, and right now that goes until May. And many of us are absolutely terrified about COVID, yet we are not seeing the rates of uh, vaccination that we ought to see in Canada against known threats like influenza, pneumonia, where the Public Health Agency of Canada wants us to have at least 80% of people vaccinated, yet we're, we're you know tens of percents below that, at least for pneumonia and slightly less than that for influenza. So there are things that we can be doing that we haven't been doing. And I think this is part of the problem. Without good data, it's hard for us to make those decisions. And that's why more research is needed quickly but at the same time, we need to start acting quickly in the in, when we don't actually have the right data to act. Dr. Kettner, I mean, I, I understand that there's probably quite a bit of literature about about studying this. But I mean, what what is the what's the basis of your of your concern then? If if if, there, if the if the the uh, social distancing is is debatable in your in your mind, uh, what do, what do you worry about that? Well, I worry about the consequences of this uh, social distancing. Um, I worry about people who are losing their jobs. I worry about um, I worry about uh, interruptions with the health care system itself. There's many doctors in quarantine right now in Manitoba because they've returned from from countries uh, other countries. Um, I worry about the message to the public about the fear of uh, of, of coming in contact with people. Uh, being in the same space as people, shaking their hands, having meetings with people. Uh, I worry about many, many consequences related to that. And if you look at the, the data for what we act, are actually dealing with, I'll just give, I want to give this example. In Hubei, the province of Hubei, where there's been the most number of cases and deaths by far, the actual rate of cases reported is one per thousand people. And the actual rate of deaths reported is one per 20,000 people. So maybe that would help be, put be, people put things in perspective mm. as to the actual rates and risk of, uh, of, of this condition, because it's a lot lower in every other part of the world, uh, including Italy and certainly Canada and the United States. Joel, so, um, I'm going to jump in. Uh, thanks very much for sharing those thoughts. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Dr. Kettner called from uh, Winnipeg. Uh, a bit of breaking news today.